Okay, in this, I want to build a simple IPO program about a pizza order and also introduce the idea of click events. Um, we're going to need functions and event listeners so that we can run our code on an event. Because right now it's kind of annoying that I have to refresh the page and load the page every time I want to run my code. So we're going to start a new, um, new project. And in the last video, we created this JS template. So I'm going to start with that. So I'm just going to right click on this folder and say copy. And then you can right click in the open area here and say paste. Or you can hit control V. You can see so right here, you can do control C to copy it. Click on the open area and then hit control V. And it creates a copy. And then if you right click and say rename, we're going to rename it to pizza order. And I don't like putting spaces in my file names and folder names just because it can cause problems when you're programming sometimes. So I like to do hyphens or dashes or whatever. Okay, so we use my template, pizza order. Let's right click on this and open with code. And now this is awesome because everything's set up already, right? I just need to change my title here to let's zoom in a little bit more. Title to pizza order. And then my title here will be pizza order. And I'll say place an order for a fabulous, fabulous, fabulous pizza exclamation mark. Now, right now, the HTML doesn't really matter because all, all the code is using these alerts and prompts. But we'll we'll get to the HTML in a little bit when we do the click events. OK, so we're going to save this. Uh, let's go live. All right, there's my pizza order. Place an order for fabulous pizza. Open up my console, so inspect. Go to my console, and it said hi. Yay, it's working. OK, and it gives me that little dev tools failed to load. That bothers me. Get over it. Okay, um, here we go. So let's just go to our JavaScript now. All right, I'm going to open up my JavaScript. My program title is going to be Pizza Order by Mr. V. I don't need this console to log high anymore. And, and this is going to be an input process output algorithm. Now, these are all comments. Remember, we learned about comments before. My code isn't doing anything. I just have a, 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 a title, and these are the different sections, section titles. So for my input, what am I going to do? I'm going to ask them for the size of a pizza. So I'm going to create a variable, let the variable size be assigned, and then I do prompt, um, enter size of pizza, medium, small, are large. Cool. Right? Prompt function will print out the message, have that little input box. The user types in medium, small, or large. Kind of the weird order. Why did I do medium, small, large? Small, comma, medium, large. And because this is all inside of one quote, it's one big string, right? Just does that message. Um, then I also want, I'm going to give them the option of two toppings. This is a place that only sells two topping pizzas. So we'll go topping one, and we'll prompt um, enter first topping, like so. And then I'm just going to put my cursor on this line here and hit Control C, and then Control V, and it copies it. Look at this is awesome. You guys have such good programming tools. When I was programming years ago in university, the editors were not as good. Like this is warning you, hey, you can't redeclare a block scope variable topping one. Like you've already given this variable, you can't declare it again. So we've got to change it to topping two. And we'll change this, enter second topping. Okay, so that's our input. And you can ask the user for as many things as you want, right? Prompt, save in a variable. Prompt, save in a variable. Prompt, save in a variable. One thing I encourage you, make sure your variable names are descriptive. They should describe what they're storing. Okay, that's important. Makes your code a lot easier to read. Now, the process part is let's make a variable. I'm going to do message again. Or I could do order, I guess. Oh, no, I like, I like message better. I think that's more descriptive. This is a message I'm going to output to the user. I'm going to use those backticks again. Right? Remember, that's above the left tab beside the one. 
and I'm going to just give a message that says um, your size pizza, right? So your small or medium or large pizza with uh, topping one and topping two will be ready soon. Exclamation mark because I'm excited. And then we end the back tick and do a semicolon. And like I said before, semicolons are optional, but there are some weird cases where they need to happen. So I just recommend always doing the semicolons. I wish they weren't optional. You just had to do them. Okay, so that's my input, my process. I build this beautiful message using the input from the user, right? We process that input and build a message. And then I'm just going to alert the message. All right, let's try that. So I save it. Go back to here, enter size of pizza. I'd like a medium pizza, please. My first topping will be pepperoni and second topping mushrooms. Your medium pizza with pepperoni and mushrooms will be ready soon. Cool. Hit it again. This time I want a small pizza with um, ham and pineapple. Hawaiian, right? Classic. Your small pizza with ham and pineapple will be ready soon. Okay, so this is this idea of input, process, output. Now, the next big topic I want to talk about here is click events and event listeners. So as I mentioned, it's kind of annoying that if I want to do, I'll go back here. If I want to run this code again, I have to do, refresh it every time. So I would love it if I had like a button here that said place order. And every time I click the button, it would run the code. Let's do that. So the first thing I'm going to show you, well, let's first add a button. So underneath this, I'm just going to create another paragraph and add a button that says place order. Save. And oh, see, it asked me all this stuff. I'm just going to enter some gobbledygook. Gobbledygook. See, that's annoying, right? Every time it loads, it does that. I want it to only happen when I click the button. All right. So here's the key idea. We are going to define our own function. So we've already learned like this alert is a built-in function, right? Prompt is a built-in function to JavaScript. And these functions store code, right? The alert function stores code that displays an alert box. The prompt function displays code or stores code that displays a prompt box with an input element and returns the stuff. So we're going to define our own functions. So the way we do that is we use the keyword, the JavaScript keyword function. Then we give our function a name. I'm going to call it um, order or place order. And again, when we give the function a name, it has to follow the same rules, variable rule, uh, naming rules as variables. No spaces, right? Um, uh, if, if it's multi words, it's good to do that, that capital letter, place order. Anyway, so function place order, then we have to do parentheses, and then we do an open and close brace like that. Okay, so I'm defining a function with this name. We'll talk more about these parentheses later, those are important for now, they just have to be there. And then these braces are basically where the function starts and where it ends, and anything in between those braces is the the code that this function is storing. It's like potential code. So I'm going to take all of this, I'm going to cut it and paste it into here. I've got Prettier installed, so when I hit Control S, Prettier formats it for me and makes sure that all the code inside of the function is indented, which makes it easier for me to see where the function starts and where it ends. And what you'll notice now is the code never runs, right? unless I did place order followed by parentheses, just like we did alert and then parentheses, place order parentheses, it'll then run the code inside of the function, or yeah, inside of the function. Okay, cool. But again, I don't want to have to type function names into the console, right? I want it to, to click on this button. So this is really cool. So here, I'm going to uh, just add a comment above this function, right? I'm going to store 
um, the order code in a function. And now I want to add an event listener to the button to run the place order function. Long comments. I'm trying to be descriptive here. So the way we do this, okay, I hope we have time for this. I'm only allowed to do 15 minute videos. Okay, I need to give this button an ID. I'm just gonna call it BTM, short for button. Okay, button has an ID. Have we talked about IDs before? I don't think so. We've talked about classes before, and a class was used with CSS to select elements. Um, an ID is like a class, except it's like you have a student ID. Only you have that student ID. It's a unique identifier. So if I did a class, I could add a class to multiple elements. An ID should only be added to one element. This is a unique identifier for this button. All right? OK. And in my JavaScript, JavaScript has a command called document dot get element by id isn't that a nice descriptive command now i type this wrong all the time so it's awesome that we have um, autocomplete you can actually just type doc and then hit tab and it'll finish the word document and then i always go dot gel and by typing gl the first thing that comes up is get element by id so you hit tab again and it completes to get element by id that's my little lazy don't type all the words up okay this is a function, so we need to have those parentheses, right? Just like prompt and alert. And inside of this function, we need to give the function some data. Well, what am I giving it? The L of the ID. So as a string, btf. Okay, so this code here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna highlight this. This should get the button element. So if I were to run the code in the console here, you'll see, look, it returned the button element. Ta-da! Get element by ID. It gets me a reference to that element. Awesome. Now what I can do is I can add on to this. I can add another dot, add event listener, and again, dot add, and it pops up here, hit tab. This is a function, right? So we're getting the element, and then we're adding an event listener to that element. And inside of here, we have to tell it what event to listen for. We're going to listen for the click event. There's lots of other, and that has to be in quotations. There's lots of different events to listen for. And then we give it the name of our function. Okay, no parentheses, just the, the, the name of the function right there. And basically what that means, this means it says, okay, document is a, a, a JavaScript variable that refers to the web page. Please document, get the element with the ID btn, Add an event listener to it so that when you click it, it'll call this function and it'll run the code inside the function. Okay, save that. Oh no! Oh dear. Oh no, this is okay. Cannot read properties of null. This is a classic error. It's trying to find this button, but then it's like, I can't find it. And that's because this script tag runs before the page loads. So it can't find the button. It's searching for this button with the ID BTN. It can't find it. We have to add the word defer here. That basically says pause the JavaScript, let the page load first, and then run the code. And now no error message. I click the button and hey, look at this. I want a large pizza with cheese and more cheese. Your large pizza with cheese and more cheese will be ready soon. Okay. Every time I click the button now, right, I've added this click event listener to it so that when I click it, it calls the place order function, small pizza, mushrooms, pepperoni. Ta-da! That's so cool. Okay, I'm almost at my 15 minutes. It's going to cut out. But uh, hopefully that made sense. See you in the next video.